Metaverse in the Q3 is going to reveal what I think is going to be some interesting numbers, also some trends that might be breaking out to give us some indicators for both the Q4 reports, but also, I think, more importantly, how this may play out in the long term. We'll dive into all that good stuff. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to Metaverse Insider. Let's get into it today. I do want to thank our sponsors for this report, and that is Gala Games. If you guys are looking at blockchain gaming, maybe for the first time, you're starting to explore maybe blockchain gaming and tokens from a variety of different options. Gala Games is a place that would be one of your first stops out there, so make sure and visit uh, their website. It's also just go over to gala or games.gala.com. You'll be able to find all that good stuff. A lot of new entries, too, in the gaming side of things. We've talked with Gala before about Spider Tanks. Superior is one that's coming out. Also, if you've not seen or looked at their Node programs, make sure and take a look at all that good stuff. If you're interested, the link is in our description, so all you have to do is just click that. It'll take you on your journey uh, to Gala Games. Let's get into the report today, and this is talking about the Q3 performance from a lot of different areas. And uh, as you guys know, we report, obviously, here on Metaverse Insider, a ton of projects in the blockchain gaming space, kind of the evolution of the rails, what are projects and tokens that could be the drivers of the Metaverse in the future, and then also the bigger, more long play approach and that would be projects like you know or projects companies like meta who has really uh went in on the long term we're going to be covering all that for you guys i want to start off with a let's go over and scan to the top of this and uh, i'm going to start off with a big report that we've went through kind of fine tooth combed this uh to take a look at a lot of different uh features this was a dap radar uh blockchain games report and the interesting thing you'll see right there on the cover, 1.3 billion were raised in Q3 by blockchain games and metaverse projects. When I look at this in comparison, and, and you, as you guys know, we, we track metaverse as a whole, uh, which includes blockchain gaming, NFTs, et cetera, through crowd sentiment. And it's the same thing we do with the overall market data. We track metaverse, we track DeFi, and then, of course, you know, all the token breakdowns in the CPI. And 1.3 billion, even though that sounds like a lot uh, in terms of maybe the scope of where Metaverse is today, it's not really that much in compared to uh, most startup industries that, um, you know, kind of have gone out there. I didn't want to, I want to get into a couple of things here. Uh, 50 networks with over 912,000 daily active user wallets uh, interacting with games, smart contracts. These were all coming in September. These were the Q3 gaming activity. Uh, which accounted for pretty much half of, let me kind of zoom up on that. Let me zoom up on that for a little bit. It'll take a little bit for those highlights to show. But you can kind of see the gaming activity accounted for almost half of all blockchain activity uh, coming in from DAP Radar. Also, Alien Worlds and Splinterlands remain the most, uh, the two most active Web3 games. Many people look at those. I understand you may, may or may not like those, but the point is, is that uh, they do have a lot of active user wallets, and the more important thing, uh, thing to watch is maybe how some of the other staple projects in Metaverse and gaming are performing, and we'll show you some of those as we get into it. Uh, Gods Unchanged cracked the top five collections by trading volume in September with over 18 million generating game assets. So I think that only the only reason I highlighted that was just to show that even with this project, whether you like it or not, the fact that there, and we are seeing movement in gaming NFT assets in a market like what we have right now is still pretty impressive. Um, another area that I wanted to kind of focus in on here, Sandbox itself launches Alpha 3. We all know about that. 200,000 daily active users visiting multiple experiences now uh, from all over the space. So lots happening out there in the market. And I think as we look at some of the things that um, they put in the key takeaways, the month over month and dominance remains at, at about 48%. Now, why is that important? If you just think about the metaverse space, the gaming space as a whole, and I think most people would agree that this space has probably taken some of the sharpest declines in terms of token value and also just in slowdowns of how some of these projects have been able to move in. Uh, for that to be able to maintain that, I think is still showing how resilient this market is. So Blanco's Block Party, Star Atlas, two online games that are now using NFTs became the first two or first two Web3 titles to be released on uh, the major PC gaming marketplace, Epic Game Store. 
that again goes in and shows you a little bit more about how, you know, I guess in the essence of what we might see from Web3 making it in, in essence to traditional gaming. But I think what we'll most likely see is more and more growth from traditional gra- gaming uh, moving in to where, um, you know, Web3 is going to eventually kind of go to, which I think we're going to see more and more uh, space in this. Some other th- things I want to kind of focus right here uh, on, and that is, let's add this one up a little bit, and right here, top six gaming protocols by Unique Wallet. Of course, Wax still leads, even though Wax is down. They were down 36% of all gaming activity, uh, accounted for 36% of all gaming, but they had a 15% decline uh, in their overall uh, performance in the platform. Binance holding in there. You've got Matic, of course, starting to make a move, but of course, Hive, which is the uh, kind of uh, underling. But the one that really surprised me was Solana, and because we have seen a lot of movement from Solana, and I think there's a big opportunity here for Solana to kind of take a lead Question will be is some of the projects that are out there on Solana, what are they going to look like? Obviously, we know about Steppen, et cetera. Here's the top 10 uh, blockchain games uh, in Q3. Alien Worlds became, uh, once again, the most played blockchain game. 190,000 average daily users, uh, which was an increase, 14%. So again, still showing interest. A lot of this I would like to see is more geographic data that shows where these players are coming from because I think that that's going to be one of the key things as we start to see gaming growth, especially in blockchain, is what countries and what regions of the world are truly starting to cultivate uh, Web3 gamers, because I think that's going to be an important factor in terms of adoption, because adoption will be uh, the next big component uh, that really kind of takes us to the next area. Further into this, uh, Gameta, uh, their Web3 gaming platform, uh, became the most used app in September, 1.83 million users, so more, again, more innovation, more new companies, more new projects starting to make their way uh, into the reports themselves. And you can kind of see their growth right here, just all the way from June, right here, the big spike that they had in terms of overall game uh, game growth there. I don't know. I would love to get you guys' input. You know, when you look at gaming tokens or metaverse tokens, we'll say an example would be Gala, our sponsor for today, and or something like a render, which is more of a Rails token. Which route do you guys take? I'd love to kind of get your feedback. Just uh, you know, pop them in the comments. Make sure and smash the like button. If you like these kinds of reports, well, this is going through a, a whole ton of detail. I'm going to try to buzz through this so you guys don't have an all-day video here because it's, it's pretty deep in terms of all the things that are happening within the industry. Uh, but I'd love to know. We'll get your feedback. Here's Axie Infinity. Of course, daily active user wallets uh, now declined by 86% compared to Q2. It's a big bump. And there's a lot happening with Axie right now. And of course, you guys know that there's a big token unlock. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and it's most likely going to cause, if you're following our own CPI data, we've seen a continuous kind of a, a, a march with declining sentiment on Axie for about the last week and a half. And I think a lot of that is moving into uh, this token unlock event that's coming. So just be on the on the lookout for that if you're looking for Maybe you're in Axie in a bad position and you want to take a tax loss harvest and then maybe re-enter, do something like that. Could be a play for you. Uh, But have we reached the bottom of virtual worlds? This is a big question everybody asks me. Is this kind of the bottom or do you think that this is ever going to revive? And when you look at it, it's a down quarter. Categories trading volume decreased by 90%. And if you think about all of the... and, And I also compare this to even... Uh, you know, when you look at the traditional token markets, you know, all coins, et cetera, then you look at high risk and or innovative stocks that are, have also started to see this continuous downcline. I look at this very similar because it is, uh, one, a cottage industry and an emerging market for it to still be in these frameworks of growth and investment tells me that this is probably going to stick around for a while. Now, this has a lot of similarities to early stage innovation in social media, early stage innovation in the uh, birth of the internet, early stage innovation even in mobile and how those markets ramped up because there were so many companies that did not have faith in what those markets would eventually do. Uh, Metaverse projects experienced a cool down period. Sandbox, of course, sales increased by um, 
26%, uh, almost 26% this month, although uh, they are still down 73% from the second quarter. So up a little bit, but yes, down overall. And I think Sandbox still leads as probably the premier uh, metaverse and gaming platform to watch. Don't necessarily think they're going to lose that crown. Another one that we've been watching and has also made it in uh, its way into the CPI is Steppen. Steppen, of course, celebrates its one year. We've had Steppen on the show before, so check out that video. Make sure and smash like if you like those kinds of videos. If you're more interested in, you know, dev leads or CEOs, you know, let us know. Smash that like button because, or do you like these analysis? Because there's some different angles here, more sentiment data, more of these uh, more put together pieces where it really kind of creates a narrative or builds out a narrative based on all the news. Love to get your feedback on this. But stepping in Q3, monthly active users decreased by 67%, reaching 482,000. This is a problem, I think, for stepping in just in general, you know, move to earn. And I think we'll see, one, there's more competition coming into the space, but I think we'll also see maybe a little bit of uh, a revelation around what move to earn really is. And what I'm what I'm looking for in move to earn And I I know a lot of people will say, well, there's a lot of innovation in there, but I really am looking for kind of the next innovation in Move to Earn, whether that is some sort of integration into Web2 platforms, more uh, platforms into mobile apps or major uh, partnerships. Those could be uh, scenarios. But I I still think there, there is a big opportunity here. I just don't think that it's been unlocked just yet. Here you've got uh, the Sweat coin, which many people have asked us about. We don't currently track this one, but it's also robust enough to support uh, token staking, NFT games, other things. This is just showing you other uh, other platforms. And then Step, uh, Step, and of course the Step app also debuted on iOS and Android. That's the thing that I think will give it a little bit of a bump, even though we're in kind of, uh, at least here in the U.S. And again, I don't know where their uh, demographic data is um, shaking out in terms of who has the most users U.S.-wise or you know, they're Australian-based company. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see that. But uh, December 1 is when that's going to happen. So lots happening there. Um, what else did they have in this report that I thought was interesting? It was a good report. If you're really, really uh, wanting in to get into this stuff, download uh, the report over on DAP Radar. Uh, it, it's worth a read, but it does take some time to kind of dig through um, all the topics. I think that was pretty much about it. Let me make sure there was one. Yeah, this kind of showed. Yeah, here it is right here. So this showed some investment in blockchain games. You can kind of see the total in 21 and a little bit of the scenario that we're seeing right here in Q1, 2, and then Q3. Still down, but still 1.2 billion. So uh, not a bad uh, scenario. The concern obviously is this uh, is this run rate right now because that's that's essentially what we'll see in terms of use uh, out there um, overall. So expectations around the investments for the year growing industry has been about down about 8% uh, to $9.25 billion overall. So good news, I think, in the sense that we're still seeing innovation and also that I think we're uh, still seeing interest from a lot of the early adoption uh, investors and a lot of VC firms. But again, sometimes I look at that and I also think maybe, just maybe, you know, there could be a lot of manipulation going on here. So there are scenarios that play into this when you look at how VCs are essentially getting getting an access to what is early IPOs that aren't traditionally IPOs and the chance to be able to cash out on those. Uh, It's an interesting, um, you know, problem that I think the industry is going to have to be facing soon. Here's another report. Uh, Magic Eden gains uh, ground on OpenSea. Let me zoom up on that for you guys a little bit because there's some Cool stuff here. You can kind of see, yeah, right here. So you'll see right here is Q1 and OpenSea pretty much dominating the space right here. Uh, Obviously with Feb, this is January, February, March. And then you see Q2 starts to separate and then boom, right here in uh, the third quarter. Now, granted, we're down 77% uh, in terms of trading volume, but the fact that Magic Eden is at that level with OpenSea, which somewhat dominated the NFT space, And again, I think this just gets back into the point that we've talked about time and time and again here is that nobody wants to pay these fees. That's the big issue. Uh, It's the problem that I think the industry is going to continue to face. We just did a piece on this the other day 
where Magic Eden obviously is dropping the uh, royalty fees for NFTs. So how do you like that? Do you think that's a, a good, I know as a creator, some people it's a mixed bag on exposure and low fees versus the potential for those royalties to be coming back to creators and sustaining the ecosystem for many of these cre- creators. Because a lot of times that is something that I think could open up a whole new um, area of innovation if creators were to be able to get those royalties. I don't think it's just going to make these guys rich. I think it's going to maybe, because if you know creators, one thing they do is they add to their art. And I think if we do see that um, really starting to develop over the future, uh, it could end up playing out pretty well in terms of value. So just think about that. Other areas, uh, NFT sales by uh, blockchain volume. Let's go over here and zoom in on this a little bit just to show you guys Solana gaining a little bit of ground here. And I think this is good. You know, right here, Solana up 13% in the market uh, share in Q3. And we've talked about this before. We still think Solana is a big player in the NFT space. I do like some of the early uh, projects. Obviously, we know about Steppen and others. Uh, but there's a lot happening um, on Solana. And we did a full Solana breakdown video just last week. So if you haven't checked it out, make sure and go over and um, pull that in. Uh, another thing, too, don't forget, put some questions in over on the sidebar. We'll try to get to that in right after the, um, uh, the show today. And then again... Um, love to kind of get your feedback because we're we're really exploring a lot more um, from the gaming aspect and how you guys are approaching this, whether you see more gaming adoption, are there new projects that are starting to showcase? Love to see your uh, comments because we and we all always look at the comments and typically that's a lot of times will help our researchers kind of feed what they're looking just to go check things out and start the process. but uh, Sandbox, a lot, of course, happening here. Seven days, 19 hours now uh, moving um, into its next phase. I think there's a lot of a, a lot of good things around Sandbox. That, and we've had Sandbox on the show here a couple of times. And they are, I still think, one of the core cornerstones of where Metaverse and gaming will go. And I think they'll, they'll start to bring in these, these partnerships, I think, are going to be very key. And what this might mean for kind of the next level here, I think is, is very uh, interesting. I want to showcase a video uh, by Sebastian. Uh, and this was talking about their leaderboard announcement. Let me play this. Let me highlight this up a little bit. And leaderboard was a way to um, first see how you ranked towards like increasing your chance of earning the alpha pass. And when two users had the same number of EP points, since there is a finite number of EP points, we use time as uh, what we call a tiebreaker, something that would uh, like differentiate players. What we didn't expect is that like this tiebreaker, the time would become a, a much more competitive. Uh, yes, yeah, no, we had a, a it brought in a lot of speed runners and a lot more competitive uh, competitivity. Yeah than expected and intended. So that that balance a little bit our view of like, we're creating the metaverse as a place to be- So as you can uh, see there with, uh, let me pause that one. As you can see there with uh, with Sandbox, they're constantly iterating and, and dealing with these kinds of challenges and being able to grow uh, what they're doing as what I would say is still the leader in the space for at least Web3. Um, and I think these kind of scenarios, you know, the, the leaderboard situation, I think, is one that you have to be watching if you're a sandbox owner. And, but also maybe if you're really looking at, at a, whether it's a player or an enthusiast side of things like I am, of uh, where Web3 Gaming is going. Uh, it's an interesting thing to keep your heads on. Just to give you Alpha Season 3 metrics, here's their numbers. Uh, 39,000 on daily. Uh, monthly at 201, uh, total wallets 4.1 million, landowners at 22,000. This was stronger than I anticipated, uh, even though it's down. Uh, sand staking, 128 million sand stake currently. Um, and then you've got website, 30 day users, 1.6 million. So a lot, of, a lot of people still trying to discover you know, what's happening out there. Number of chat messages, 4.1 million KYCs, 113,000. Hours played, I think, is down uh, a lot as well. So. Interesting stuff. The other big player in the game is Axie, of course. And Axie right now is one we've talked about. I want to showcase, you know, this unlock um, that's happening because there's some things. This is basically a look on chain, a tweet that was, but here's a list of unlocking addresses for advisors and private sale. 
And you can kind of see, I don't know if it's very small in this tweet. Let me zoom, zoom way up here. It might show it um, there. A little bit there. We'll highlight that right. So private investors, advisors, they'll receive basically around 20, 21 million Axie tokens. This is 8% of the total supply. We're slightly above 885 million. The likelihood is we're going to see a lot of exits. So let me see if we can showcase this a little bit here. It's hard to zone, zone in on this. But if you go over to the Twitter feed, you'll be able to pull this up. And you can kind of see Delphi Digital in there, uh, ARCA on private sale, uh, Defiance Capital, MakerDAO in there, uh, and then Sebastian Bourget even in there as the uh, advisor. A lot of private uh, sales uh, and advisors uh, in this round. So again, big exits most likely going to happen. This is most likely going to cause uh, the Axie token to tank a little. Now you could play this two ways. If you're, like I said, if you're in right now and you're in a lot deeper, it could be a tax harvest for you. Uh, maybe if you're looking at uh, maybe never been an Axie, this might be an event uh, that could open up some opportunity there on uh, Axie token acquisition. And if, and if you're in now, maybe there's an opportunity to grab the same or a greater amount of Axie if this dip does occur. So uh, remember, this thing had 22% uh, drop over the week because of these kind of fears. So something to be watching for sure. Uh, now, that being the case, you can kind of see a little bit about the vesting schedule. I'll kind of showcase this. That's where we are today. And you're going to see that token unlock. There's that big step right there that kind of takes off. Again, these are typical of all different types of projects. And, you know, it's a, it's a normal evolution. of This one happens to be a pretty big vesting uh, unlock. So that in itself. And if you know anything about, you know, investing and how vesting and cap tables work, it's kind of like that in, in essence for what's happening in these projects here. So just be aware of that. Um, also, just so you guys know, Axie Infinity just flipped link uh, for most traded token among the top 500. This is in, coming in from ETHWALES. Um, and again, it's still holding on. I, I, I don't know. I look at Axie in a, a kind of a love and not love. I don't hate. It's not love uh, position. One, because I think there's so much great opportunity here, but at the same time, I feel like the doors are closing in. And what I mean by that is I just think competition, um, the user growth base that we're going to see that I think will really see a, a huge adoption curve coming soon. I'm just wondering whether or not we'll get a chance to see that really in uh, take hold inside Axie uh, based on innovation. Sure, I like a lot of the innovation they're doing. Definitely like Origins. I love the mobile uh, aspect. I think that's going to be a big play for them. But it's just going to be uh, interesting to kind of see this in comparison to other projects that could take a lead in this, this next run. Now, that's not a big one if you think about it and you compare it to something like Alluvium. I mean, look at the token unlock right here. I mean, this thing is an absolute skyrocket. So this is a problem, again, why Alluvium has really started to drop off in terms of sentiment, data, and a lot of people um, looking at Alluvium completely different. And this has been one of the things that was showcased in a couple of Q&As uh, with Kieran Warwick. If you haven't watched those, it's a good one to check out because they do kind of get into uh, this kind of stuff. Let's go into Vivi. Now, Vivi is one that we have talked about. We've got a lot of Vivi fans I know on the, on the show. Uh, and I'm kind of curious. If you like Vivi, smash the like button. Do you like them that much? Do you like the token better? Are you an investor more so in the token versus the collectible platform. Kind of like to know. Give me some comments uh, if you're watching this after the live stream. Uh, so right here, celebration of Black, Back to the Future Day. Uh, we're dropping fully interactive uh, digital collectible DeLorean time machine. Uh, this is a good one, I think. This one could be big too. Again, uh, many of these are, I think are, are going to continue to fly on these collectibles. And if you're a collector, a digital collector, or just a collector in general, you get you get what I'm talking about. Some people are coming into the, the collector space and they're brand new. So they're learning and they're actually entering their collector career um, as a digital collector. That's the way I was. I had never really collected comic books. Uh, now, my my family, we used to collect toys, you know, and love the, the whole toy gamut side of things. Uh, and my brother still has a massive, massive toy collection, which is very valuable right now. But I think collections are, uh, are going to be a big part of the digital future. And of course, uh, Vivi, a big player here. 
Here's a, a little bit on uh, just the, uh, I want to play this because it's kind of an interesting little, just to kind of see what they're doing with the Back to the Future. It's got a lot of interesting, uh, you know, capabilities. This one actually will let you place the collectible there, and then you can fly this thing. So I thought that was kind of cool. Very interesting. There's go flying mode right there, rolling them in, and then out of here. So I don't know. It, some people will get a big kick out of this, okay? And some people might think, gosh, what a waste. But I don't think so. I think what we're going to see is a lot more innovation in the area of digital collectibles. And this is just kind of the beginning. So uh, be ready for all of that. Now, if you're a, a watcher of our show, you're going to probably remember a video that we did with William Quigley. He's the CEO and founder of Wax. Um, and here was a, a little clip from William. It's just a fun clip, but it kind of uh, makes you know what's happening here for sure. Let me go to it. I got music coming in from everywhere. Hang on just a second. Yeah. There we go. Let me see. I will love them. Possible. Possible. Right, here we you go. know, as soon as we have flying cars, uh, then I will love them. But possible. You know, as soon as we have flying cars. Now, what I want to know uh, is how you guys are, are out there clipping. First of all, how do you find these clips? Number one, I mean, the amount of fan... Uh, you know, focus that is on this space, I think is still to me this day surprises me that you guys are able to pull these clips. Uh, and then of course we get something like that. So it's kind of fun. Uh, Viva verse demo confirmed for Anaheim. Uh, this is designer con, uh, coming in. This is another feature. I think that we'll continue to see more on the VV front. Here's the VV verse engine agnostic. Obviously you guys know, uh, unreal engine. Uh, Unity, all other devices, uh, really kind of playing into this. So again, more innovation in this space. A good thing for Metaverse, but also a good thing, I think, for digital collectibles. And then uh, this was the breaking news on Vivi. Uh, they signed two uh, new big licensors today, one of which has been uh, worked on for over a year and a half. This is coming from David Yu. So again, their partnerships has continued to grow. So I think this is another thing. We had a VV, the VV team on here. And they kind of alluded to a lot of this. So um, it has an opportunity here to, to really break out, especially as we start to see a recovery in the traditional markets. Remember gaming, metaverse, I feel like they have completely detached away from what you know altcoins, Bitcoin, Ethereum, et cetera, are having to face uh, because of the macro pressures. Gaming is a, a bit more of an entertainment environment. So though we may see a downtrend in volumes, what we are seeing, and obviously we'll see that in pricing as well, but the one thing that I don't think we see a lot of downtrends in is how much adoption we're going to be getting in this space. So that, that in itself is a good thing. Um, if you're not tracking the OMI Turk token burn, uh, you can, I don't know if we'll leave a link for this for you guys, but there's a full Google sheet in here. And this uh, number 11 right there, that was, of course, was when they dropped uh, the Back to the Future there. So a lot of activity going on right here. You can track this literally by the day on the total amount of token burn that OMI has. And then of course you can kind of see that right there on the total number of token burns. This is available out there to you guys. So um, we probably should put a link on this uh, sheet in there because it's at least where you get an access to, to really see this kind of live streaming uh, into a sheet like that. Uh, let's go into another thing here and that is uh, Azuki's. Okay, the Azuki's Gold Skateboard. This was uh, release shields, another $1,800 ETH or 1800 ETH, um, and you look at projects like this as we see more, again, more of these kinds of projects that start to kind of get into that more pop culture aspect. Azuki's is, is really kind of one of the leaders out there in the space. Uh, this was just, uh, you know, just getting, giving you an example of the physical back token. This is their PBT, uh, which was an open source standard, um, that whole, you know, and I think the digital side will be a big, it'll be a big growth area, especially in the aspect of uh, major brands and then also maybe the luxury brands that I think have a, a capacity to really understand how this might connect. One for authenticity, the potential for ownership uh, scenarios that play into this. But I think, again, the physical aspect to the digital aspect, something that a lot of people are trying to figure out the math on right now. I think it's definitely growing 
and we're going to see more of it. Results of the Golden State Skateboard Auction are in 24 hours, fierce bidding. Uh, so you had um, top eight skateboard auction winners, uh, and you kind of had to see a little bit about what, what actually happened here. But again, this was the one that really uh, became uh, the component here. And again, this may not be your bag. Maybe you're brand new to Metaverse Insider. And maybe you're just looking, hey, Paul, we really just want token price. We're not into all these kind of things. Let us know. We'd love to get your feedback on this. Maybe you're into these collectibles and the NFT side of things. Could just, we've seen so many people that have been able to really do some crazy things with that. But the bigger question is, if the market continues this downtrend, are we in for an opportunity to see an up, upslide on a lot of these kinds of assets? So big deal there. Uh, here is Render. Render, of course, has been one we've uh, focused on here on the network. And again, this is getting into the rails of Metaverse. And you've got, of course, Jules Erbach, who is their CEO. He'll be speaking at the Solana Breakpoint 2022. Uh, during his talk, he's also going to cover the AI uh, neural net rendering. We showed this the other day. It's Octane X. And uh, this, of course, has caused Render Token. I think that, among many other things, it really has caused Render to really spike up the charts. Our CPI numbers have been showing it. Uh, obviously, price action on Render has been doing pretty well as, as well. So lots happening there. Don't forget, get some questions in over on the side. We are uh, running a poll there, so make sure and participate for that. Another big project that we've been tracking and seeing a lot of movement on has been Chili's. You guys have seen, I've talked about Chili's for probably the last six or eight weeks, and I've just said, listen, we're going to get there because we got a big event coming up with the World Cup. Chili's and Socios obviously tied to that. But right here, uh, their testnet phase four, uh, Cayenne, is now live. So this is going to be good for its development group. And then uh, I think Chili's in general, what they're building in terms of the sports ecosystems or the potential for that, whether you're looking at, at you know, Formula One, the soccer or uh, football aspect of it, uh, I think the fan token is a real component that is going to see a massive amount of growth. Because sports is so large as an overall industry, the potential there is, is uh, really kind of breakaway level for sure. Lots happening over on Gala, uh, Legends Reborn, um, Age of Chance coming soon. So we've got a lot happening there. You can download the launcher right here on Mac, which is kind of cool. Uh, and there's some other things that you have to remember with uh, Gala. Uh, and they're trying to get into kind of uplinking or, or upranking on Steam is when you're in on Steam is to jump in, whether you're doing it something like, um, you know, some of the games that are available there is to save them and also kind of tag them or notify uh, where it kind of gets you um, up on the list where, where more people are, are interested in that game. So that's another scenario that plays this. All right, so let's see here. We've got uh, Eternity coming in for uh, Battlestar, Battlestar Galactica. Don't know when this is going to release, but it's another one that, of course, will be uh, pretty huge. So uh, in the market, I think overall we're going to see a lot of growth in uh, a lot of these emerging and, and new projects. Here's Superior, available now on Steam, or will be. Uh, and again, I think it's very close soon. Um, so this is another one that, that you should be on the lookout for, along with you know so many other projects that are really starting. And again, we've talked about this a lot of times. Head down, people building. Those are the projects that you should keep an eye on. Those are the projects that you really want to watch, because those are the ones that typically are going to be in the right place at the right time. Uh, moving into this next phase of growth. And I think that's going to be a key thing. Here is a good example of this. And here was an open letter that came into and from a meta shareholder that basically said the company needs to get out of the headcount and also stop spending so much money on metaverse. Now, there's a lot of people here. I mean, Brad Gerstner, here's a good example um, right here. Uh, this is uh, Brad Gerson, open letter to the company. Now, Brad Gerson, if you don't know who he is, probably one of the best investors in Silicon Valley. So it's not that it's just a nobody saying this. This is Brad Gerson. And I think when you look at the traditional Silicon Valley investors, even though I feel like the, most of them kind of get it, and the, you know, A16Z, there's been a ton of uh, investments there, along with many of uh, Andreessen Horowitz, roll out. We've, they get it. Some of those will get it. Gerstner has not necessarily been uh, into this space just yet in the sense that he is understanding maybe the direction here. I'm sure he understands it. He's probably just looking at, hey, we need to get returns right. 
But if you look at what uh, Yatsu is saying, he's kind of going the alternate direction. Now, this is the guy who runs Animal Cabrants, who's obviously seeing massive amounts. Now, there's two different books here that are being played out. So you have to take this with a grain of salt. Yatsu, he's preaching his own book, and that's Animal Cabrants. Then you've got Gerstner preaching his book, which is meta and other traditional web too. So each of them kind of have a point in the sense that caution over here, the other is innovation. And I think the question will be, and it always kind of boils down to this when we see big investment going into the space, is um, what's going to move the needle? Because if we see something moving the needle and we see real innovation, that's what starts the evolution of these massive company buildups that we saw in the early 2000s that created Facebook, Twitter, even you know Apple to a certain extent. Um, now the question is, is whether this right here, and that's MetaQuest, uh, is the key to all of this. Is MetaQuest Pro, uh, which is shipping now, anytime soon, um, is it the key to maybe breaking out the metaverse for the entire industry? Um, Will it, it obviously is going to be um, sparsely used, I think, mainly because of price. But uh, we're going to try to get one in studio. We're going to take a look at it. And um, I'd love to get your feedback. Do you think this device, is it like the iPhone did to the earth? Because remember, when the first iPhone came out, it was displacing what was the BlackBerry. And a lot of people thought it was very, one, very expensive. Two, they just felt like this would never really fly. It's not the next evolution. What's with this touchscreen thing? Who needs these buttonless phones? You know, this whole era of mobile adoption began on that day. Are we there with what Meta is trying to do with VR? Very interesting uh, scenario because I think this does open up a lot of different, one, I think Zuckerberg sees this, a lot of different uh, commerce opportunities, but more importantly, adoption into what is the next generation of what the internet might not or might be. So very interesting uh, tug of war going on right now because you've got innovation who are trying to pull the market, someone like a Yatsu, and you've got you know, a guy like Brad Gerstner who's trying to hold the market back and say, listen, we need to play on the Web2 market because this, this market isn't here just yet. Both good arguments, but not necessarily uh, both in the right direction in terms of growth. We're going to try to get to a poll real quick, take a look at that one. What do we have on the poll? All right, so Top Metaverse and NFT Gaming Token of Q3, Sandbox, Gala, GMT, and Omi holding in. Omi and Gala kind of outperforming there. Interesting. Steppen looks just like their chart and their user base, which has been declining. So uh, interesting stuff there. That was a good, a good poll. We'll get into that. Let's get into a few questions. And um, I think we have some of the sentiment data as well. I'll pull that up for you guys uh, as well as we're taking a few questions in here. Do you think, uh, coming in from Nicholas, do you think crypto linked to football will be bullish for the World Cup? Yes, I do. I think uh, Chili's will get uh, some run on it. But more importantly, I think the big thing here is that it will become or at least get some notoriety. And I think if we can get this along with real projects, that are doing stuff rather than exchanges that are just trying to get you to spend money. Um, but real projects that are starting to figure out solutions and utility, then I think people start to get it. What's this used for? Then, then they start to understand it. So I think that in itself is, uh, is pretty good for sure. All right, let's got, we've got a couple more questions, several more questions here I'll get to. Uh, Jen Smith, my kid watches YouTube gaming, but none of this metaverse yet. Indie games are huge. Uh, need those creators. Uh, Jen, definitely agree with you there. And I think we're starting to see, and we've interviewed many of these uh, Web2 guys that are have been building games for a long time. Even if you look at uh, just the SimCity guys who are starting to move into what's happening over at Gala, uh, there's a lot happening. SimCity, Vox, the Gala platform, and what that game might be in the future. So I think that transition is occurring. It's very slow. I feel like a lot of people think it's slow, but when you're looking at the space granularly, it does feel slow. If you step back and you don't really track it, you know, to the level of detail that we do, I think in a year it's absolutely grown dramatically because the more I talk about it with friends and, you know, tech guys in Silicon Valley, they look at it from more of an arm's length and they still believe that metaverse and gaming is 
is growing at breakneck speeds. Again, I think it's it's the perspective that you have on the space itself. Thanks for the super chat here. Um, someone dumped 30 million OMI yesterday. Buy orders uh, bought that up immediately. Tons of support. That's good too. You know, we saw uh, OMI had a little bit of a drive, uh, and it's been up and down on the chart. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick, and we'll. Uh, get into some of that. I'm not sure if the sentiment data is out just yet. If it is on the charts, they were updating. I know going into uh, yeah 1024. Yeah, so let's pull up OMI and see where we got uh, Dead Vulcan. And there's OMI right there. So yeah, kind of flat really right now. Even though it's trending slightly down, market of course it's almost in alignment with the overall market. Uh, right now. But the fact that OMI is even performing like this to me is still a bit of a surprise because this is one of those tokens that that I was skeptical about as to whether or not it could really uh, do something. And I think there's some opportunity here. It's going to be interesting to watch. I own the token in part of our portfolio. So uh, we always love to see that, but it's going to be uh, a close one to watch. Andrew comes in. IMX is up against a release of over 277,000 uh, million tokens on the 9th of November. Uh, and you're up and get out of this project. Uh, this is going to be the case right now. You know, there's a lot of unlocks that we'll continue to see throughout the next year. So just be um, very, very aware of that. Uh, does, does SAN see a new all-time high in 2024? I think we'll probably see most everything, uh, possibly in all-time highs in 2024. The unlock of Bitcoin, you know, when we start to see the next happening, I think 2024 is a good potential year for not only the markets, but also the recovery of the macro, uh, dealing with a lot of those kinds of pressures that we're dealing with right now. 2023, I think, is a bad year, though we'll see some slides in and out. I think there'll be some winners. There's definitely going to be some trades to be made, so uh, it's something to watch for sure. Um, Steve saying also that the other side was not mentioned. Uh, they're going to go live. Yeah, w- you know, listen. You guys know this. Uh, the amount of innovation that's happening in this space to cover this, we'd have to do a three-hour live stream, I feel like, um, to really cover the breadth of really what is going on with all the major projects. I know it's something we probably should do, and I'd love to kind of get your feedback if those are the kind of content pieces you want. Token- tokenomics, definitely the big elephant in the room, play to earn uh, versus play for fun space. Um, you know, listen, it's um, play and earn, is I've uh, been corrected <laughs> many times, because uh, that's the whole concept now, is that if you don't, you have to create a game, one, that's playable and entertaining, and can potentially be an earn option as well. Those are the ones that are going to win in the future. It's the ones that will have most likely the kind of utility uh, aspect of this. So uh, definitely uh, a lot of runs on here. I wanted to just take a look at Chili's and Render. So here's render kind of coming off right here, shooting up, and it did over over index right here from the 54 up to a 55. So that's a pretty good, you know, one point jump. But the 48 to 49, again, good move right here. So render might be doing some interesting things. Uh, Ape has been kind of, you know, flattened down. Uh, we've been watching that one. The other one I wanted to look at was Chili's. This one have, shows a little bit of flattening now. So we may see some more run on this one. Uh, Because it did fall down below where it was high performing there for a little bit and uh, started to kind of stabilize and move out. So I'm looking at Chili's closely in the next few days to kind of see this. Oh, Chili's is not updated yet. This is a 1021 data. So we should have this one anytime soon. Might be even updated as we speak. I know the team's on it right now updating the new CPI. So you get to see it live. So anyway, uh, good stuff out there. Uh, Again, thanks a lot, guys, for uh, tuning in. If you guys are not part of our Diamond Circle, make sure and get in. It's a free uh, email list, but you also have access to some other things that we do, which is uh, member-only content. So we'll do a lot of breakdowns on different tokens that we don't necessarily cover in the show. And I know a lot of times you guys ask for those, but it's free. So uh, it goes into the Diamond Circle. If you're uh, in there, let me show you an example of this. Uh, Just go over to the the, uh, Diamond Circle. You can log in and or sign up right there. These are the kind of things, member-only content. You'll get some discounts on courses, things like that. And then if you're already in it and you go to your library and you're in the Diamond Circle, just click on that View Content section. And this is going to give you into all the different 
and additional bonus content. So we did a quant piece last week, the 20K portfolio update. Let me zoom in on that for you guys. We did an Atom update for October, a Solana update for October. All these were available only to Diamond Circle members. So it's very easy to join. Jump into that. Of course, if you guys are listening in on the podcast, make sure and jump over to the YouTube channel. Like and subscribe because that's going to get you notifications and you get more stuff like this when we do these live streams, which is really important because I think this gives you a head start on the rest of the market. It gives you a little bit of insight and alpha that maybe everybody else wasn't able to put together. So that's why you watch. If you guys want to reach me, it's out there on Twitter, at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on Metaverse Insider. 